together very close to our border. No, they are not there just for fun, you know. Uh, they are preparing a massive operation. Something happened here last night that moved us very deeply. It was so far outside our experience as Australians that we'll find it very difficult to convey to you, but we'll try. Sitting on woven mats under a thatched roof in a hut with no walls, we were the target of a barrage of questioning from men who know they may die tomorrow and cannot understand why the rest of the world does not care. That's all they want, for the United Nations to care about what is happening here. The emotion here last night was so strong that we, all three of us, felt we should be able to reach out into the warm night air and touch it. Greg Shackleton at an unnamed village which we'll remember forever in Portuguese Timor. Ford and Kissinger visited Jakarta, I think it was December 5th. We know that they had requested that Indonesia delay the invasion until after they left because it would be too embarrassing. And within hours, I think, after they left, the invasion took place on December 7th. What happened on December 7th in 1975 is just one of the great, um, great evil deeds of history. Early in the morning, bombs began dropping on Dili. The number of troops that invaded Dili that day almost outnumbered the entire population of the town. And for two or three weeks, there was just, they just killed people. E quando eu vi dizer fogo, eu gritei-me logo, pus-me logo no chão, pus-me no chão e só senti os, to, os corpos a caírem por cima de mim, pareciam folhas, né, a caírem por cima de mim. E acompanhado de gritos, gritos, outros a chamarem pela mãe, a esposa, né, e era, era, aquilo era, era mesmo terrível. This council must consider. Indonesian aggression against East Timor as the main issue of the discussion. When the Indonesians invaded, the UN reacted as it always does, calling for um, sanctions and condemnation and so on. Various watered-down resolutions were passed, but the U.S. was very clearly not going to allow anything to work. So the Timorese were fleeing into the jungles by the thousands. By late 1977-78, Indonesia set up receiving centers for those Timorese who came out of the jungle waving white flags. Those the Indonesians thought were more educated or who were suspected of belonging to Fredolin or other opposition parties were immediately killed. They took women aside and flew them off to Dili in helicopters for use by the Indonesian soldiers. They killed children and babies. But in those days, their main strategy and their main weapon was starvation. By 1978, it was approaching really genocidal levels. The church and other sources estimated about 200,000 people killed. Uh, the U.S. backed it all the way. The U.S. provided 90% of the arms. Uh, right after the invasion, arms shipments were stepped up. When the uh, Indonesians actually began to run out of arms in 1978, the Carter administration moved in and increased arms sales. And other Western countries did the same, Canada, England, Holland, and everybody who could make a buck was in there trying to make sure they could kill more Timorese. There is no Western concern for issues of aggression, atrocities, human rights abuses, and so on, if there's a profit to be made from them. Uh, nothing could show more, it more clearly than this case. It wasn't that nobody had ever heard of East Timor. Crucial to remember that there was plenty of coverage in the New York Times and elsewhere before the invasion. The reason was that there was concern at the time over the breakup of the Portuguese Empire and what that would mean. There was a fear that it would lead to independence or Russian influence or whatever. After the Indonesians invaded, the coverage dropped. Uh, there was some, but it was strictly from the point of view of the State Department and Indonesian generals, never a Timorese refugee. As the atrocities reached their maximum peak in 1978, when it really was becoming genocidal, coverage dropped to zero in the United States and Canada, the two countries have looked at closely, literally dropped to zero. 
All this was going on at exactly the same time as the great protest of outrage over Cambodia. The uh, level of atrocities was comparable. In relative terms, it was probably considerably higher in Timor. It turns out right in Cambodia in the preceding years, 1970 through 1975, there was also a comparable atrocity for which we were responsible. The major U.S. attack against Cambodia I started with the bombings of the early 1970s. They reached a peak in 1973, and they continued up till 1975. They were directed against inner Cambodia. Very little is known about them because the media wanted it to be secret. They knew what was going on, they just didn't want to know what was happening. The CIA estimates about 600,000 killed during that five-year period, which is mostly either U.S. bombing or a U.S.-sponsored war. So that's pretty significant killing. But also, the conditions in which it left Cambodia were such that high U.S. officials predicted that about a million people would die in the aftermath just from hunger and disease because of the wreckage of the country. Pretty good evidence from U.S. government sources and scholarly sources that the intense bombardment was a significant force, maybe a critical force, in building up peasant support for the Khmer Rouge, who before that were a pretty marginal element. Uh, well, that's just the wrong story. After 1975, atrocities continued, and that became the right story, because now they're being carried out by the bad guys. Well, it was bad enough. In fact, current estimates are that, well, you know, they vary. I mean, the CIA claimed 50 to 100,000 people killed and uh, maybe another million or so who died one way or another. Michael Vickery is the one person who's given a really close, detailed analysis. His figure is maybe 750,000 deaths above the normal. Others, like Ben Kiernan, suggest higher figures, but so far without a detailed analysis. Anyway, it was terrible, no doubt about it. Although the atrocities, the real atrocities, were bad enough, they weren't quite good enough for the uh, purposes needed. Within a few weeks after the Khmer Rouge takeover, the New York Times was already accusing them of genocide. At that point, maybe a couple hundred or maybe a few thousand people had been killed. And from then on, it was a drumbeat, a chorus of uh, genocide. The big bestseller on Cambodia, uh, Pol Pot, is called Murder in a Gentle Land. Up until April 17, 1975, was a gentle land of peaceful, smiling people. And after that, some horrible holocaust took place. Very quickly, a figure of two million killed was hit upon. Uh, in fact, what was claimed was that the Khmer Rouge boast of having murdered two million people. Facts are very dramatic. Uh, in the case of atrocities committed by the official enemy, extraordinary show of outrage exaggeration, no evidence required, faked photographs are fine, anything goes. Also, a vast amount of lying. I mean, an amount of lying that would have made Stalin cringe. It was fraudulent, and we know that it was fraudulent by looking at the response to comparable atrocities for which the United States was responsible. Early 70s Cambodia, Timor are two very closely paired examples. Well, the media response was quite dramatic. Back in 1980, I taught a course at Tufts University. Well, Chomsky came around to this class. He made a very powerful case uh, that the press underplayed the fact that the Indonesian government annexed this former Portuguese colony in 1975. And that if you compare it, for example, with Cambodia, where there was acreage of things, that this was a communist atrocity, whereas the other was not a communist atrocity. 
Well, I got quite interested in this, and I went to talk to the then deputy foreign editor of the Times, and I said, you know, we've had very poor coverage on this, and he said, you're absolutely right. There are a dozen atrocities around the world that we don't cover. This is one for various reasons. So I took it up. I was working as a reporter and writer for a small alternative radio program in upstate New York, and we received audio tapes of interviews with Timorese's leaders, and we were quite surprised that given the level of American involvement, that there was not more coverage, indeed practically any coverage, of the large-scale Indonesian killing in the mainstream American media. We formed a small group of people to try to monitor the situation and see what we could do over time to alert public opinion. To